This is Startup Storefront. One in three women have either had their drink spiked or know someone who has, according to a 2021 YouGov survey. It's a serious problem that disproportionately harms college students. That is, until Shira Bernard invented Nightcap. By covering the top of the glass, it makes it a lot harder for someone to spike your drink. Since their launch, their company has taken the world by storm. Nightcap has 422,000 followers on TikTok, and while on Shark Tank, they landed a deal with Lori Greiner in record time. In this episode, we speak with Shira Bernard, the co-founder of Nightcap. We discuss going viral on TikTok, their Shark Tank experience, and what it was like going to the Shark Tank reunion in Vegas. So listen in to protect yourself and those around you. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Shira from Nightcap. Thanks for coming on. For people who don't know, what's your company do? Um, yeah, so Nightcap originated as the drink spiking prevention scrunchie, which is a scrunchie that you can wear on your wrist or in your hair. And when you go out to the bar, you just take the cover out, place it over your cup, and then pop your straw in there. So that's the first product that came to mind. I thought of Nightcap in a dream when I was sleeping at 16 after a friend of mine was roofied. But yeah, I just thought of it in my, my sleep and I woke up and I told my dad, hey, I think I have a good idea here. And he was the first person to like believe in me and we started working on it together. My parents like don't come from an entrepreneurship background. So the first steps we took was just like filing for a provisional patent and creating a logo and finding a seamstress to make the first couple prototypes. And that's how it started. Let's go to the beginning. Is your friend okay? Yeah, yeah. Or just She's, a bad experience. Yeah. Awful, um, I'm sure. Bad experience. I honestly was thinking too, like, I'm about to go off to college. I don't want this to happen to me or my friends when we go to college. So let's think of something. When you first started this idea, did you think about it more of like solving a problem for yourself and your friend? Or was it more of like, maybe your dad or somebody at one time told you like, this could be a company at some point? Or was that never the idea at the beginning? It was primarily so when we went to college, it wouldn't happen to us. And when I thought of it, I was like, this is more than, this is definitely more than that. And yeah. this is like a life-saving product. And I was 16, I was like, what did I just do here? This is, I saw the potential that it had. And just so we're clear, we're focusing on like college parties here. It's not like you're going to a bar at 16. Why would you ever do that? Right. Yeah. Right. 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 I have actually <laughs> not been you're to still a bar yet. To a yeah. Bar. <laughs> yeah. Never been to a bar yet. Um, How old are you now? I'm 20. You're 20. Okay. So you started 20. this three, four years ago. Yeah. Four years ago. Yeah. Okay. And then did you have a prototype before you got to college? Yeah. So I actually went on Shark Tank before I got to college, but I couldn't tell anyone. Um, Why not? I couldn't tell anyone. Because it didn't air yet? It, or? Yeah. It hadn't been announced. So okay. I had filmed, went to college. People just kind of knew me as like that girl with the scrunchie kind of thing. Okay. Um, and then the next <laughs> semester, I got to like announce it. So as a freshman, I got to announce going on Shark Tank. Yeah. And then I remember people had like Shark Tank party. I had, I went home to go watch the actual episode and people went and had like Shark Tank parties on at the behalf. entrepreneurship school and yeah. like watched me on Zoom and stuff. It was cool. How much sales did you have before you went on Shark Tank? So we had $68,000 in sales. And was that over a year? How long of a runway are we talking about? That was probably a year. Okay. Yeah, it was like okay. $68,000 in sales, but it's crazy because I actually made a TikTok like a month before we went on the show. Okay. And What that, year is this? Just to give so people context. 2019. So or sorry. 2019, we started the business. Yeah. 2020, we filmed Shark Tank. Okay. And 2021, Shark Tank aired. So that's a very relatively quick amount of time. I mean, yeah. that must have been forefront to your mind. Like, okay, if we're starting this, let's try and get on Shark Tank yeah. like ASAP. Was that you and your brother's kind of uh, mentality going in? I mean, I've always wanted to go on that show. Like everyone, that's everyone's dream, I feel like, as an entrepreneur. Um, I never thought it'd actually happen. But when we started the company, it was like COVID had kind of just hit right after. So it's like, no one's going out to go party. Why don't we just apply to Shark Tank? So we were sitting in the house and my brother just kind of went online and applied. And apparently 40,000 people applied to that show. Yeah. So yeah. it's very- And you got selected. Yeah. Did the product look exactly like this when you were on Shark Tank or has it evolved a little or a I lot, mean, maybe a lot? It's pretty similar. Like okay. the only thing that's changed is the logo. We just 
changed our logo to make it pop more. Yeah. yeah. So you're actually wearing our old logo. <laughs> but oh, sorry guys. But it's the original, so yeah. we'll never make those again. So love it. And how um, much was how much did you sell it for? Or how much do you sell it for now? We sell one for eleven ninety nine. We okay. have four packs, gift boxes. What I was saying before is I made a TikTok like a month before we went on Shark Tank yeah. and it made us forty thousand dollars. You said that was twenty nineteen? So that was must have been twenty twenty. Okay. I want people to really understand this because we, there's a lot happening right now with, as we go into this recession, all entrepreneurs like yourself are always asking like, what do I do? How do I hedge all this stuff? And everyone gets sort of tight around like dollars and marketing. And I just keep telling people like TikTok can change your business. And there's some people who believe me and there's some people who think I look crazy when I say that. And yeah. you know, Lexi and our team has worked with countless companies that she sees it happening in real time. Yeah. And so we have enough data, right? So we're using logic to say this platform that we just happen to call TikTok in today's society, whatever it ever is, like just don't don't shy away from it, but embrace it. And so, tell us tell us your story. So you're you're on TikTok. So we started on TikTok right before Shark Tank because of COVID. We weren't doing anything. We we're just like, oh, well, might as well play with this. So we had twenty eight thousand dollars before we started posting on TikTok in sales. In sales. Okay. After like about a year of having the company and we had a one go viral. I think we had made like five videos and we had one go viral. We made $40,000 off one TikTok. How many views did it have? I think it had 6 million. Okay. For the listeners, what was the premise of the it video? It was like the beginning of TikTok. I'm sure everyone knows the sound, like I'm obsessed with it or something like that. It was like, I'm addicted to this. Yeah, that yeah. one. Okay. And it was just like a, like a seven. I'm addicted to this. Something like that. Oh, it was like, yeah. I'm obsessed with it. Um, yeah. I don't know, but it was just really quick putting it on the cup and just showing the packaging and people just were like, wow, this is they, cool. It connected with them. It resonated. Yeah. And I didn't realize we could do that. So we got to go on the show and say, Hey, we made $40,000 in the last six weeks off of TikTok. Yeah. Off of, well, so Trump was actually going to ban TikTok. So we said social media. Oh, uh, okay. smart <laughs> so, move. Yeah. So, yeah. Smart move. But, um, but yeah, we, we did that. And, and now our whole entire company is based off of, TikTok. The good news about TikTok is like half of the people that pay attention to videos on TikTok will eventually buy, which is way higher than Instagram. And so you have a real like mm -hmm. the demo at least is not only are they willing to watch, but they're willing to spend. Yeah. That's how I differentiate the two. But where did, where did your sales come from? Like, where did you notice? Was it Indiana? Was it Florida? Was it I mean, all over? It's all over. We've sold in like over 40 countries now. I mean, besides like the U.S., like the U.K. is really bad. So a lot of people have been ordering from there, but that's because the drink spiking situation there is just unbelievable. And people are actually going around using needles to spike people instead of dropping it in their drink. But going back over to TikTok, recently I kind of realized that, I mean, influencers cost a lot of money now. And you're, you're spending so much money on an influencer when you're not getting the return that you want. So I kind of chose like, oh, maybe I should just, be our influencer. So like, A, you have, yeah, I'm able to like post anything I want for free and B, I can put my face to the brand. Right. So you kind of have like, instead of just seeing the scrunchie, you have now like someone who's like, oh, doesn't that girl own it? Or, you know, kind of like a relatability factor, which is really like, really nice to have on TikTok. And I honestly recommend that to like every brand to, to, create a face like have a face it could be the ceo it could be it could be lexi could be anyone it could you could hire someone to be the face of your brand or you could do it yourself but i chose to do it myself yeah that's amazing and so okay so then you get onto shark tank and it's a bunch of zoom interviews i imagine because you're doing it during covid mm -hmm. which is kind of unlike how they usually do it yeah and then when they film are they all sitting like 18 feet apart is that or, or was <laughs> yeah. it a little back to normal they no they spread them out they okay. they i think yeah, it was you watch the clip they are very far <laughs> yeah, apart yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah they, I guess, people told us that made it really hard to hear yeah. anything like, it was like because you couldn't like because you're also if, let's say you're negotiating with Lori, yeah. but then cubans over here you're like legitimately kinda, turning yeah i didn't think degrees. of it like that but yeah it's kind of just like looking like, <laughs> yeah you're like where's that voice coming from <laughs> yeah. yeah we had the quarantine season so okay. we stayed at the venetian hotel for 10 days in vegas in vegas couldn't Can't, leave yeah had to stay in isolated. there <laughs> isolated but the good thing is that i was about to turn 18 so i was technically a minor okay. so my dad had to come with us so we ended up getting two rooms so we had a little more space to oh, move nice, around and like nice. practice yeah. our pitch and work out on one side of the yeah. room um but yeah it was um quarantining and then you just go in there on like the 10th or 11th day 
do your thing and leave. How long did you guys practice for? Our pitch, we practiced for like two months. Okay. And we knew it so well, like we printed out photos of the sharks and put them in front of us and in the room. So you would, okay. You have yeah. Printouts. Yeah. We nice. had printouts. We would blast music just in case just to throw you during off your the game. pit. Yeah. To throw mm. us off, mess us up. I would do my brother's parts. He would do mine. Like we knew it by heart. I That's good. That. Yeah. What was your strategy going in? If you had one, yeah. did you have a strategy? Um, I mean, not really. Like we kind of just knew our pitch, had an idea of like what they would ask us. And we wanted Lori. We got Lori, which is great. Um, I mean, you got her fast too. Yeah, we got her very fast. So when you come out on stage, did it, did it, did it go like you thought as rehearsed or did you miss? Cause I feel like this always happens. I feel like you rehearse, 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 lights come on yeah. and you probably miss a sentence or two. No, it was like, it was, better, exactly. it was better than I could have imagined. That's wow. good. Yeah, I was wow. freaking Kudos. out. But because you're 17, I mean, I was 17. Like, yeah, no, that's, no, that's really scary. Yeah, but for now sure. I can do anything. So, <laughs> yeah, you could then too. Yeah. So, then, all right, so you guys come out and you know you want Lori. Mm -hmm. Why did you want Lori? What was the thing that, I mean, obviously she's amazing and everything else, but what was the specifics of why Lori? I just feel like as a woman, I know there's Barbara, but like, I just felt like Lori kind of like resonated with the brand really well. And I like her as a person. It didn't have anything to do with like QVC or stuff like that. I just kind of like really like her. Yeah. The other sharks besides Barbara are all men. So it's like, how do you, it's the same thing as like my brother and I were the co-founders, but if you listen to him talk about it, you're probably not, you're going to, you're going to buy the product because I'm because talk, talk like, it's a it. woman, mm -hmm. you know, you yeah. just yeah. relate more. Um, There's an emotional well, yeah, component yeah. to that. And like you, un I understand like the issues that women have when they're going out and like the fear that they have um, sometimes. Cause drink spiking, it does affect men, but it's by far in a way, uh, you know, more affecting the female population than the male population. So of course it would resonate more having yourself talk about the problems that, that you face every time you go out than your brother per se. Did you have deal terms? Like, were you like, okay, if this is the offer and this is the equity, we're good. Did you practice the, that at all? Like even negotiating whether they want a higher percentage not really. We just didn't want to go in there and get like made fun of for asking for too much money. Okay. So <laughs> it was valued at like $240,000 at the time to put it in perspective. I think it's like a, like a little bit under four now. Mm -hmm. Um, million million. Yeah. But we asked for $60,000 for 20% and got 25. So it wasn't too far off. Yeah. That's but, pretty good. Yeah. And then is, are you and Lori still in good contact? Yeah. Yeah. We just came back from a Shark Tank reunion in Vegas, which I had never encountered before. I didn't even yeah, know they did cool. that. But yeah, it was in Vegas. Was and this the first one? I think I heard it was the second one. Okay. But we're newbies. So, so it's a bunch of you and a bunch of startups. What do you guys do? Is it like, uh, do you guys hang out? Do you have breakout sessions? Is it, what is it? Yeah. Or is it just a big party? No, it was like a bunch of breakout sessions. I actually spoke at the TikTok panel. Oh, nice. And it was really cool, but. Tell us about the TikTok panel. What, what, what yeah, other, what other did brands you pick up? are. So it's funny because I didn't prepare and I, d I barely knew I was, spe I didn't even know I was speaking at it until like a couple of days before. And I kind of just like was sitting there before and I was like, I was worried about what to talk about. And then I realized everyone overcomplicates the platform, TikTok. So it's not like you have to be talking about getting verified and all this stuff when like everyone's just like, what do I post? So I just kind of like narrowed it down to like the basics and I tried to explain it in the most simple way. Like I just tried to give them examples of what I do. And I said, hey, like you guys are all in this room right now. You've all been on Shark Tank. You can leverage that. Like you can just put a photo behind yourself and say, this is me. And people love storytelling. So it's not like you have to be doing these crazy things on TikTok. Like just tell them what happened. So what do you tell, like, let's say there's a brand who's listening right now who's struggling to get on TikTok. What mm. do you say? Like your post should include these three things. Don't overthink it. What are the things that you tell them? I mean, I would say three things I would say what is your product? Who are you? And why is this product better than, better than others? I just think it's like so simple and people overcomplicate it. And, and I mean, not, not to, not to call anyone old, but older people think that TikTok is like a Gen Z thing and that like, we're just so genius about TikTok, but it's like, it's, it's supposed to be simple. And that's what I tried to explain because once you start to overthink the platform, that's when you're doing it wrong. And everything that all the videos that I constantly think about, they, they flop. And the ones that I make in three seconds, they go viral. Yeah. 
So it's just all about like transparency and like relatability and building a connection with the person watching and just talking to your phone as if it's your friend. Will you ever hire? Are you are you thinking of expanding into new product lines or what is what is the state of the company today? Oh, uh, we have new products. We have keychains and gift boxes and now we have a product from the UK that we're able to sell in America. I don't know. I think like after the whole Shark Tank thing and the the TikTok panel, I had a lot of people asking me to, for like consulting and stuff like that. So I honestly think that's something that I want to like go into and I might have to like and we might end up having to hire people, but if if you can do it, then yeah. then do it. And I like being busy, so. Yeah. I tell people today, like, but I think it does come naturally to some extent to the younger generation, mm-hmm. right? Because I think, like, to your point, the older people are overthinking it for yeah. sure. But I do think, like, the number one hire, if you have a product of any kind, is, is a social media team. 100%. And if you're doing it yourself, that's great. Yeah. Most people can't because they're not good at it or they're overthinking it. But yeah. if they can, yeah. Does Lori give you any guidance around, like, new products or, or like, she must I, I can I just because that's how she works that's um, how her brain operates she hasn't really been involved in the new products but like she's done a lot of she kind of opened my eye to like how important branding is mm. and in what way just like things like need to pop like people are not looking like they're not you know if it doesn't catch your eye in the first like three seconds it's like yeah they're scroll. moving on yeah yeah um so she really like showed us that, like that, that is actually pretty powerful about this yeah this does this definitely catches your eye well yeah i think that's also why we started doing really well on tiktok because i mean i started kind of just using the product and showing videos of that first yeah. and you're like what what just happened <laughs> what did she just put on the drink right. yeah um, it's really eye-catching so that's, <laughs> that's true obviously why like people will interact with it and then they'll see it again but yeah you can't really do that for years you can't just be putting it on the cup and like it just gets boring so yeah. I've kind of ventured out into doing videos like what do I do in a day or behind the scenes of Shark Tank. That's smart. And, and, and if you're any brand, you could do that. You could do the same. You yeah. have to. And it, it's just simple. Like you can make a 10 second video. What is it made out of? Right. Do you have any um, like amazing customer testimonials or like some really like heavy, hard hitting stories from um, your customers? I have two, but um, we have one Amazon review and the title of it is this like saved my life. So this girl was walking through a bar and she had, I guess the, the lights were down and she had walked into like a room where it was light and she found like a pill on top of the nightcap. And so she... Like a crushed up pill? Yeah, like, I think it was, it was like, it's on our Amazon reviews. I'm not sure if it was crushed up or just like or a just pill like sitting, sitting on top, there. but it was there. Well, wow, that's got to be terrifying. Yeah. Uh, For two reasons. It's like one, you know, it was about to go down. But it's just crazy, like, Ugh. I just, like, to think that, like, I came up with something that actually could, like, In actually real time. it could have been very different for her that night. Right. And then I had a girl message me, and she said, hey, I thought this product was, like, silly. My bro- my boyfriend got it for me, so I, like, threw it in my closet, and I, you know, didn't care about it. But then I got roofied with meth, and she's, like, traumatized and depressed, couldn't go out, and just said, like, she always brings it with her now. But yeah, it's it's depressing. To I, I would think most stories are going to end in in nothing. Like n- you're not going to find the crushed up remnants of a pill. It's it's not going to be anything like that because the preventative measure of mm-hmm. that device on top of your cup is enough that most people aren't even going to try. If 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 the goal of it is to prevent it, then it's probably doing it very well that you don't have a lot of Amazon reviews talking about the residue of some crushed up pill was found on this later on Mm -hmm. because some creep walking through a bar with pills ready to roofie someone is not going to drop it on the drink with a cover on it. It's just not going to happen. But I'm actually curious about the the problem as a whole. When you look out at the, the big picture, do you know if, if this is more prevalent at bars versus house parties? I mean, statistically, n- there's like nothing. It's, on, it's probably hard to, yeah, to get those, to report, right? To report. Like, <laughs> yeah, you, there's you no just, self-reporting. Right. Yeah, because like, you know, I talked to like a lot of bar owners about this and they will say, oh, they just drank too much. Yeah. Um, right. So there's no like yeah, statistics. There's a liability really. there. Yeah. Like not really. It's, um, what were you saying about the statistics? Just if it was more prevalent, because I know on your website it says it's designed to fit perfectly over a solo cup. So I didn't know if that's because 
the statistics had shown that it was much more prevalent uh, to occur at house parties versus a bar because you're not getting solo cups at a bar. So when I heard the solo cup, I, my mind immediately went to house parties and I wondered if this was a bigger problem there when you're thinking like frat parties or Greek life parties or even just like at your average college party. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the reason we, we advertise it for solo cups is because obviously this is like similar size to a solo cup. It's not going to fit really great over like a wine flute. So we just kind of say that it, it does fit over like buckets, though. So like a big, oh. <laughs> yeah, they, it, it works. But yeah, like we advertise a lot like on college campuses because they have bars and house parties. But do you have like reps or anything? Do yeah, we, we just it? started an affiliate program. I mean, I think for your point earlier or whoever said it, but it's supposed to also act as a deterrent. So it's not just like a safety precaution. Like people are supposed to look at this and be like, OK, I'm not I'm not messing with right. her or him. Because, like, why would you want to? Yeah. It's like a trampoline. You try and drop something there, it's going to shoot off. Yeah. It's so. also a reminder, though, I think, probably, of, like, people being ready in some way. It's mm -hmm. like, don't do not do this here, almost. Or, like, there could be a collective if someone's, right. someone sees multiple of them. Maybe they're like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Just it's a hard thing to think about. Yeah. Just don't mess with us. Yeah. <laughs> so no ambassador program, but an affiliate program at colleges. I think it is an ambassador program. Okay. Like they get they get a commission or something like that. Yeah. We, we just came out with it. So I'm honestly not. I think it's called I could an see ambassador this How many I universities sororities. are you in? We're in, I think, over 100, um, which is super exciting. Yeah. We're trying to get into like music festivals and stuff. We have an investor oh, yeah. named Julia Michaels. She sings that yeah. song, Issues. Mm -hmm. So she's connected us with some of those people to get our foot in the door. Yeah. Like hopefully... Coachella that's a dream but have you raised more money close. since <laughs> since Shark Tank so she came in after Shark Tank I think she saw our Shark Tank episode mm -hmm. and she DM'd us on Instagram and just said like I want to be a part of this so she is 10 percent and that leaves my brother and I at 32 and a half if you want to do the math yeah so colleges music festivals bars liquor companies uh we want to license it to like you know different liquor companies put their logo totally. on there yeah you could personalize it super easy yeah 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 we just didn't order with bacardi so oh there you go but we do have this product it's called stop tops and it's a sticker and you kind of you just peel it off and put it over the cup and the edges fold over you pull your straw in and that's more for like b2b so they're really cheap to make because yeah. you know there's stickers probably more single use as well yeah. yeah so you could just like throw it out with your cup if you know the only problem is i guess these music festivals don't use straws anymore <laughs> so ah. that's like holding us back that's a so little bit funny the sea yeah. turtle yeah the sea turtle conundrum yeah but stop tops is like how we're getting our foot in the door and like it's really great for um you know everyone's holding a cup so it's like you can literally slap anything on there and you're automatically advertising something so <laughs> you're preventing people from scary things because it does always ha it happens a lot of music festivals there's like viral videos on it happening there so you're preventing people from this happening you're also you know advertising something on your cup you know it helps a lot and helps with spillage do you view this as like one of a series of companies that you're going to start or, or do you really view this as like you'll be with this for a little maybe maybe like five ten more years how do you view this specific company I feel like I always want to have like a part of Nightcap mm -hmm. because I just, I feel like letting that, like yeah, just it's giving baby. it, it's yeah, baby. it's like yeah. giving it to someone is just like going to feel weird. But as for now, I see myself having it for like the next five years, okay. like working on it for maybe like four to five. Okay. Who knows? I'm not, I'm not too specific, but <laughs> I want to do other things involving like social media and stuff, which is why I like started growing my own TikTok and my own brand because I want to like venture out and be able to do other things and um, leverage my knowledge on what I have done already. Because before like I started my like social media presence, it was kind of just like everyone knew the product, but no one knows you. It's not like I get recognized anywhere because I don't, but, <laughs> <Not> uh, <yet. laughs> but, but yeah, like I think it's very helpful, like in, in case I want to do other things totally. and, um, that's totally the way to I don't look really at know. It. I think consulting. Would you do a, park, a podcast? Yes. Yeah, you have I to start a want podcast. to do a podcast so yeah. badly, but I don't have equipment and I don't have You remind me of somebody. Oh man. Remember that we were watching a webinar the other day and there's this woman in there who started a podcast just because she wanted to talk to like-minded individuals mm -hmm. and then at some point 
kind of to oh, what you're yeah. saying. They the, were they were the like young and prosperous. I forget. Uh, yeah, I totally yeah. forget. But basically, she she was saying like at some point, all these people that would come on would say, "Hey, help me with my socials." And then she started a social media consulting mm-hmm. company. And then that, that company fed her ability to invest more in the podcast. Interesting. It became like her lead generation. Okay. Kind of like what this is like for Lexi. And so then, oddly, like as she was growing, but that's that was her passion. You know, her passion was just fixing social media, solving that hard problem for so many companies, brands, founders. Yeah. And yeah, it seems to be going really well for her. That's awesome. I The yeah. only issue is like, I, I live in Florida mm-hmm. and like South Florida, so... Um, I have like a lot of people that I want to I want to bring on, <laughs> yeah. but I don't live in the place where that's you like, can move, you know. Yeah. I could move, but I like it there. <laughs> um, like I don't know, LA is very easy. You could just be like, "Hey, come on my podcast." It, it is. Um, it it yeah. is that. I mean, you could do it if you don't mind it remote. Yeah, it's I an do option. though. I, I do. like we the in person <laughs> yeah. thing. Like, I don't. I hate everything online. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Same. I think starting a podcast, I really want to, that's something I really want to do. I've, I mean, there's a good amount of entrepreneurs in Miami. I don't know them. Though. Yeah. <laughs> but the key yeah. is to start. Once you start, I'm sure they'll all emerge. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely more than one. Yeah. I, I want to talk about like, just like my experience and like young entrepreneurship in general, mm-hmm. but I feel like having a co-host is really helpful and like, mm-hmm. honestly, having your own podcast studio is nice, but. Yeah. Well, you're in college now, right? No, I dropped out of college. Oh, it's okay. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, like, I'm sure, like, you, there's, like, a club, because uh, you, you were at Tampa, right? University of Tampa? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was going to say there's probably a club at Tampa, but if you've already dropped out, then don't worry about it. Yeah. What that's... topics would you talk about? Like, what are the things? So you mentioned young entrepreneurship. Like, what, what what is something that most people don't have a window into for people like you and sort of what your story looks like? I mean, I feel like even dropping out of college is just like something that young entrepreneurs like it's not not encouraging it but like it's just like a step that like i think you should encourage a lot of people do i, I, yeah. I do encourage it no yeah, i'm just no. kidding right. i mean I, I encourage people to quit their job or do that all the time yeah. because yeah. I, I think like it, and it's not that i don't value jobs or it's not that i don't understand why people seek them it's more of uh, you find yourself mm-hmm. that's it i know and i and like that's not a capitalism comment that's a personal like very mental health very very personal journey comment yeah i think i like dropping out of school was like the best decision i ever made for myself i think that people look at it as like such a crazy thing to do but it's like those little things that you do that no one else does is separating you from everything like so what was the impetus behind that decision did you see the trajectory of nightcap and you were like if i need to grow this company i can't spend any time on school work so I definitely like had time to spend on schoolwork, I think, or sorry, on nightcap when I was in school, but it's like, I didn't want to, like I was, you know, you're like, you're living with like your best friends and like, it's fun. Yeah. So it was fun there. I love Tampa, but I also like the, the amount of time that I would put into classes that did not benefit me at all, the amount of time and money mm-hmm. and the professors like the business professors they don't have their own businesses speak on it. that's it i'm just like what what am who are who's teaching me like i should be teaching this class yeah it was crazy i was like this is a scam no it's not a scam (laughs) um (laughs) no but but it kind of is i mean that's how academia works so academia follows the innovation and so even when people can major in entrepreneurship i found that so weird i'm like you can't really do that like you, I get it. I get the things that you learn within those courses are, are well-intentioned and very, very va- valuable to some extent, mm-hmm. but you could just go out there for free and start a company exactly, and learn on your own. Yeah. And I think... Were your parents mad? They didn't love the idea at first because yeah. like, yeah, they're very like traditional. Traditional, sure. Yeah. Um, like but most parents. Yeah. Well, I was just like, I can't do this. Like I can't do another semester. I cannot, it's so much time and it's frustrating. Like when you are an entrepreneur and you know, you can like be using your time differently. It's frustrating to be going to those classes and not, you know that you're not going to be using any of it. And like, I don't want to like say too much, but I did have like this, I had a, um, a journal that I was using, or they made us get these books in one of my classes. And I opened the page and the first page said, draw lines on this page, poke holes in this page, tape grass to this page. I was like, this is insane. What? Are you in kindergarten again? <laughs> this is insane. Um, what was the course? What, what? It was called something media. It was a great school. Besides that class, it was a great school. <laughs> yeah, it's sure. beautiful. Like, honestly, I recommend go, you go there. Just, just not, I just didn't like college. Not academically. Um, yeah. But I, I learned so much by dropping out too, like with the company and 
with yourself. I feel like when I was in school, I had nightcap, but I was also kind of just like, I wasn't really sure what was going on. And then when I left, the, when I left school and like really focused on it and worked full time, I learned so much more and I could tell you like anything about the business now. And like, now I don't always say yes to my brother. You know, I make my own decisions, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> will you ever hire who, who's like, will you ever hire the, t- hire a team or grow the team? I think I'd hire a team for myself. Yeah. Like for your own stuff. Yeah. 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 You can use our studio anytime. Thanks. But you got to move to LA. Yeah. yeah. Well, or when I, you're in LA. I definitely want to make this like more of a commute for myself. Yeah. I like it here. It's a good community. It really is. A lot of creatives. Mm-hmm. A lot yeah. of people want to help each other. It's a lot more help. A lot more collaborative than any other place I've ever lived. Yeah. And I like to be around people like that, like creative people, because it makes you think more. Totally. Absolutely. And when you're around people that do work, you know, nine <laughs> to fives. Yeah. It's it's a different radio. It station. just is. It really is. Like I feel like when I'm with people who are who have like a side hustle or something like that, like you're always thinking and you're always like talking about the potential. So yeah, it gets your brain kind of going. Yeah, no. Something I didn't mention about Nightcap was that the whole point of Nightcap is that you know you you're not like bringing a lid out to the bar with you. Um, it's something where you're supposed to feel comfortable and not embarrassed to go out and use it, which is the beauty of the scrunchie. So. We have keychains now too for unisex or if you don't want to wear a scrunchie. It just goes on your keys and attaches to that so you can also cover your drink. But the scrunchie and the keychain, it's like you're already bringing a scrunchie or your keys right, to the bar. Right, way, yeah. Um, so now your scrunchie has superpowers. It's less intrusive. Yeah. yeah, so I just wanted to like slip that in there. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah. Tell everyone where they can follow you, you specifically. My TikTok is Shira with two A's. So it's S-H-I-R-A-A-H. And you could just click my Instagram in there. <laughs> um, we'll find it. And then Nightcap It is the Nightcap social medias. So well, thanks yeah. for coming on the yeah, podcast. Yeah, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, appreciate guys. Appreciate it. If you made it this far, I bet you loved the episode. So you should join our YouTube channel membership for only $2.99 a month. This gets you access to one, the whole unabridged conversation. Two, you get the episodes on Monday, one day earlier. Three, you get two additional entries to our giveaways. Check out our Instagram to see what we've given away. And four, you get access to seasons one through three. That's over a hundred episodes of wisdom and life-changing advice. What are you waiting for? Join.